Hey everybody and welcome to another episode of Design Recharge. I'm really excited to have everybody um, here and be back with Shauna after an awesome trip to Creative South and to Columbus, Georgia. And maybe it was a little too awesome for both me and Shauna. We're both like our throats are recovering and I look really crappy because I feel like I have a fever. So we're going to go full steam ahead. Shauna looks a lot better. I'll keep her big on the screen for y'all. But thank you guys for coming. And you can just, if you don't know how it goes, you just chat over there and we can see what you want to know. And Anyway, Shauna, so... Um, how was your trip? And we've already sort of been talking about it, but give us a little, little. Um, how was it being a presenter this year? It was, it was crazy. It was amazing, and I, I mean, I think I actually had, I think, more fun this year. I had a lot of fun last year, and I don't know if maybe this year it was because I was a speaker, or if it was because I um, was just more comfortable coming to the conference because I knew people, but. I just had so much fun this year, and it was just such a fantastic time. Like I, I was ready to go home and go go get sleep, but I didn't want it to end. Like to the point that like all of us, a few of the speakers, we were all on Twitter yesterday morning, just having this big like Twitter love fest. And I mean, I probably I lost most of my morning because we ended up just sitting and sending gifts back to each other. So <laughs> I mean, it was a lot of fun. It was really weird being in the speaker position because I had some a little bit of like anonymity the first two nights like the speakers knew who I was and we all got to know each other and you know hug it out have a great time you know hashtag hug next and I feel like it was really it was really kind of funny like to almost watch people that didn't know I was a speaker have conversations with me and then find out the next day and see how they acted differently around me right um, Kind of, kind of a silly psychology thing, but it was really kind of funny to see, and it was, but it was, it was fun. It was kind of funny to just kind of watch like the first two nights. Everything was kind of quiet. Like those that knew me ran up to me. The um, UCF graphic design group like came up and they they flat out told me they were fangirling, and I'm like, okay, guys, I love you, I really do, but you guys have met me like 20 times, <laughs> um, but. It was it was really weird because like then the next day I came out came out from backstage immediately after speaking and it was just this flood and I really had to pee after I got off stage and people stopped me for like thirty minutes and I was like guys you don't understand I really have to pee <laughs> <laughs> yeah I would be like let's go to the bathroom together because we can all talk yeah. keep talking well it was it was a um incredible it always is um it it was a little different i think me and you were both sophomores this year right yeah and we and we saw each other like the first day so we we immediately got to catch up and connect and hug and <laughs> right have fun it is one of the only conferences that like i mean i mean a teacher i we're supposed to like it's like waitresses you're really only supposed to touch your like customers on their on their elbow or their like shoulder, like for so you know sexual harassment stuff. So you know I'm not really if a kid's crying or something, I'm like, is it okay if I hug you? So it's so nice to be in an environment where it was just like you get a hug no matter what, you know where it starts it off. So that was really cool. Yeah, I always joke I was in a sorority, so like we always hug it out. So for me, it's really weird to handshake first, but because I was like I was fighting something in my throat. I was like, I'm just going to handshake everybody because I don't want to get them sick if I'm contagious. Um, I'm pretty sure it was mostly just sinuses, but um, there there was one girl. Yeah, Jason ran into me waiting in line to get drinks. I was like 40 minutes into the drink line and then Ish cut us and I was like, are you kidding me? <laughs> oh, I love Ish, but I was like at that moment I was like, okay, I've been waiting in line for 40 minutes. I want my drink. Um, <laughs> but yeah, there was, like, there was one girl that, that came up to me, and she uh, handed me this really, really beautiful hand-lettered print she did, and she just, like, she said, um, you know, your, your talk really resonated with me. I was with my company for four years, and they just fired me out of the blue. And I looked, and I was like, can I just hug you? Aww. I was like, you poor thing, that should never happen. I just need to hug you. So, like, there was a lot of hugging this weekend, but it was a lot of, like, 
Wait, and one to me where she was looking like a deer in the headlights. That was probably most of the weekend. I was a little overwhelmed. <laughs> well, uh, so just give people a little bit of a background. Just kind of wrap it up. Anybody who didn't catch the one, the interview before, or didn't see it yet, you at Creative South, can you give us kind of a little bit of your background? And then I'm going to show some work so they'll see some stuff, but then that way you can kind of introduce yourself a little bit. All right. Um, I'll just give, like, the brief quick synopsis. Actually, this is really fun because my mom might be listening in, so I can – I have to drop the bomb that she is the reason that I'm doing what I'm doing. She and my dad, but at age three I wrote on the wall in Sharpie, and she claims that had she yelled at me, I would not have been standing on stage. Um, so, yeah. Hey, Mom. Everyone say hey. Hi. Uh, <laughs> but I ended up going to – I'd done art my whole life. Did it in ninth grade. Really loved comic stands, unfortunately. Um, if you were at the talk, you saw some of my really crappy high school work. Um, I've since started a blog called my crappy high school work, or my crappy <laughs> high school art dot tumblr dot com. So if you find your stuff, like, submit it because I feel like this could be really fun just to see how bad we were back in the day. Um, and we, Brittany. He probably doesn't even... Yeah, I think he was pretty gone by that point, so I don't think he remembered either. Um, <laughs> but I ended up going off to college initially to, to be an opera singer, and uh, ultimately about a semester later decided I, that just wasn't for me. I didn't like practicing. I was constantly sick, and so I, I, had a, I couldn't sing all semester because I was sick. So I switched to graphic design, uh, got into the program, and ultimately like graduated in, in the program and it was awesome and got an internship at Burnett Garcia Advertising in Jacksonville. Uh, the poster I did for the World of Foot at my internship ended up getting into Comarts Type Annual. That essentially launched my career. Um, I then worked at a corporate fashion house for about a year when I was approached by an agency in Orlando to come interview and I was offered the job three weeks later, and then three weeks later I'd moved down, and then three and a half months later they fired me with no reason. Thus, mm. jumped into freelance because I was sitting on the couch with my parents. Um, they hauled butt from Daytona in rush hour traffic to be with me, and they said, you know, I, I said, um, I'm just going to, you know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to job hunt. In the meantime, I'm just going to do a little freelance to make ends meet. And my, they both look at me and like, why don't you just freelance now? You've done the job thing. You didn't come here to job hunt. Right. Just, you know, just try freelancing now. What's the worst that can happen? In six months, if it doesn't work, then go job hunt. And uh, two, two years later, here I am still freelancing. They love it. I love it. It's made for some very easy um it's made it really easy and really flexible for me to go home if I need to, and because I've been able to spend a lot more time with them in the last you know two years, which I really am very thankful for. Uh, so it's it's just been it's been fantastic. It's just been this whole thing where you know everything has just come and come and come, and um, and of course as we were sitting on the couch, mom was like, you know, you could you could work from this pretty little studio you have. You can work from home. You can set your own schedule. You can get a dog. And I was like, I can get a dog. And she <laughs> yeah. goes, Yes, you could get a dog. And then two months later, I had I had Mr. Teddy, the director of cuteness. Of course. He's my baby. Which, oops. oops. Yeah, actually, no, I have. Hold on. I can grab him. Come here, baby. There. And there he is. Yay! Aww. He's a little tired today. I'm not. What are you looking at? Um. <laughs> He's he's a little he's a little sleepy today because at Creative South he stayed with my parents all weekend and he got to play with the three other dogs that live at home. And by three I mean he played with two of them and he ignored one because he <laughs> he doesn't like big dogs he doesn't like the golden retriever so he just kind of stares at her but he tolerates her now. They had some time together I guess maybe. Yeah he ended up spending more time playing with the with the little Yorkies. So he had a good time. Look at he's such a snuggler. I love him. <laughs> <laughs> so now he's now he's really your work uh, partner. Your you know your water cooler talker too, right? Yeah, I pay him in snacks. 
<laughs> and walks. I think that's always a good he, you know, makes you get out and but he is. Man, he is such a cutie. Yeah, I love him. I love I love the chat here. Everybody's freaking out. <laughs> <laughs> so one thing that I think is really cool that you do uh, and it's so funny because it's like you didn't want to practice opera, but boy, do you practice design and illustration. It's like it's like the drive was there. It was just not focused in the right um, avenue yet, I think. And so yeah. to me, it's so funny because you really do have an incredible work ethic. And to work alone, it can be... It can be really hard for some people. It seems to really like be where your juices get going. So, can you just talk a little bit, of, like, take us through like a normal day, and because I know some things that you do in the morning, and then some things that you do at night. Those are parts that people don't aren't doing at all, and I think that might help some people. So, can you kind of go through that? Of course. Um, it's been a a little different as of late, just because my my schedule was, has been off from getting ready for Creative South and catching up on projects and making sure I didn't have anything to do while I was gone. Um, but usually I get up at about like 7, 7.30. I take Teddy on a, I'm not going to say it out loud because he is sitting on my lap and he will bolt to the door. I take him on a WALK. Um, and yeah, last thing I need is for him to fly off the lap and he's, he's laying on the cord of my headphones. So the last thing he'll do is like yank them off my head. Um, but they, yes, yeah, so I, I get up, I, I take them out, and we do a little exercise, and um, I come back, have breakfast, and I'm usually, I try to get to my desk and work by about 8.30 or 9, and I start my day with, uh, with a lettering warm-up, and I do, like, I try to do about, like, 15 minutes, you know, sometimes 30, but just 15 minutes to just warm up my hands, warm up my brain, and I just sketch. Uh, and a lot of times I start with a pink pencil, and if I really like where it's going, I'll take a darker, you know, 2B lead, and I'll go and refine it. And sometimes those end up all being, like, my side projects that I do, and uh, they'll, you know, turn into different, like, prints that I'll put in my Etsy shop. And So it's just kind of fun. And some, oh, go ahead. These are, sorry, these are just, like, off the top of your head, anything you're thinking about, something you've read... Um, or is it something specific? Like, do you have a list you're going through and you're doing these exercises? Um, it's kind of just how I feel in the morning. Like, sometimes I'll look up a quote and I'll just, something will kind of really strike me. And I'll just be like, I need to do that quote. And other times I'll, I'll be like, oh, it's a nice summer day. I'm going to find a quote about summer. Um, so just kind of whatever strikes me. And sometimes it's just like the stupid things that are in my head. Um, but if anyone's watched Kimmy Schmidt, watch out, because the next couple of days I'm doing the Pinot Noir uh, song. <laughs> you don't know what that is, Google it, because it's fantastic. Awesome. Um, I would definitely do it. So keep. So after you do your warm-up, 15, 20 minutes, then what happens? I usually try, I try to jump into work. I'll answer emails for like 15 minutes or so, because I wake up with like 15 of them. Nothing near what Peter came back to, because apparently he came back to like 2,000 emails. Uh, uh, but uh, ended up, I yeah I'll, I'll work till about noonish, eleven thirty noon, and then my least productive time is usually between about twelve and three, and I conveniently live across the road from the ice rink, so I go and I skate, and I meet up with one of my freelancing friends, and we both you know skate for an hour or two hours, and then I'll go to the gym, and then I'll come back, and I'll work till whenever I finish. So it's like usually about three three thirty to. Eight, nine, ten, two. <laughs> just whenever I finish. And so sometimes you're you finish, and then you'll just sit in like front of the TV, and you'll do some other other kind of exercises in a way. Um, and I know sometimes when we're under deadline, we can't really do that. But can you talk about that a little bit? Yeah, a lot of times if I have extra time in a day, um, I'll I have my sketchbook with me no matter where I go. Um, Whenever I'm home, my mom's always like, put the sketchbook down and just, like, watch TV with us. And I'm like, I am watching TV, but I'm relaxing. Like, this is how I, like, I actually concentrate better when I'm doing something with my hands. So I end up, like, just sketching at home. Or if I finish here, I'll take my sketchbook to the couch. And I have this massive collection of books. So I'll take the books. I'll, I'll grab, like, a couple books. I'll take them all to the couch. And I'll go through those, see if anything kind of strikes me. And... 
I'll just start, I'll put on TV and I'll just start sketching and I try to stay away from the computer and using Pinterest and stuff during that time so that I can really focus on using like the mental library that's in my brain. And yeah, so that way, all. yeah, and that way it just kind of keeps it a lot looser and I'm not comparing myself to other artists and yeah. Yeah, I think that that's one thing after you go to Creative South it can or any kind of conference. It can be like, oh, crap, I am in the wrong place. I so suck, you know. Yeah. But really, it's a everybody has pieces that they don't show, you know. Um, so I always think it's good not to necessarily compare, but to take from them what you can learn. So mm -hmm. what does like a regular week, because you do have a lot of side projects that have actually turned into some bigger projects um, like the book or anything else how how does how do your side projects fit in do you do you make sure like every Wednesday you're doing a side project or how does it work kind of whenever I can fit it in I'm really really bad about them about like scheduling in time to do that so a lot of times like the morning warm-ups I, I actually might do some of my side project stuff um, I have a folder on my computer full of full of reference stuff for the side project uh, because you know you're like one of them is the clickbait project and I illustrate really stupid clickbaity stuff that you know I, I have certain rules for it like it can't end in you'll never believe what happened next because right. then it would just look stupid so I I grab a lot of like the silliest things that you can find and um. Is this one of those? Yeah, that was a BuzzFeed article. That was the very first one I did for the project. And ultimately, actually, this project got featured by Tumblr, and they showed the image of, it was Pluto. It was the one I did with Pluto is now considered a small planet or something. And, right. oh, my God, it got the science nerds so angry. Like, <laughs> I read through the, through the Tumblr reblogs and stuff, Oh, were they angry? They're like, it's still not considered an actual planet. And I'm like, just get over it. It's a, it's an art piece. So Kim's asking, how and where do you get your side projects? And can you explain what clickbait is for like my mom who's watching that doesn't understand about this stuff? Yeah, clickbait. Hold on, I'm gonna get them off my court. Sorry, mom. I'm like, I'm like leaning awkwardly there. Um, <laughs> clickbait is essentially a title for an article formulated in such a way that you want to click on it. So it's they're they're usually very deceiving. The wording is done in such a way that you're expecting some one thing, and it's totally not what it is. Um, so, but so many of them are like, she saw a dog crying on the sidewalk. You'll never believe what happened next. And that I don't feel is right for the project. It's just stupid. Like it it doesn't do the job and. I, I had one guy like confront me on Instagram and he's like, well this technically isn't clickbait. And I'm like, okay, well, definition. It made me click on it, so it counts. Yeah, totally. You know, if if I click on it, it counts for the project. Like I've got one sitting in my folder that I haven't done yet, and it's Drake and Nikki shop for snacks. I just haven't done it yet. So um, how do you how do you get your ideas for your side projects? And are they like the one the Twelve Days of Christmas kind of expanded and it, it became a little maybe bigger than what you thought? Um, and then some of them maybe are just like a one off kind of thing. Can you kind of explain? Is it just anything that catches your your eye? Yeah, it's usually just I get the I get a real urge to do something. Um, the clickbait was just I was getting kind of tired of of drawing out positive quotes and I was, I was just like I want to just draw something a little different but I couldn't come up with what I wanted it to be like I just couldn't come up with like the right quotes and stuff for it I'm just not very clever like Danielle Evans is really good at puns um, and that's just not me so I was looking at these these uh, these headlines and I was like well that would kind of be fun and I could use this to, you know, practice doing editorial headlines because I want to do a little bit more magazine work than I'm doing now. And so I decided I would, I was like, well, I'll try this. I'll see what happens. And, like, 
I had done only three posts and Tumblr picked it up and I was like, holy moly, okay, now I have no excuse to to not keep it going. So right. I, yeah, I had to. So, which is fine. I don't mind. It's fun. And actually I had, uh, last week at the, at the speaker dinner, Justin Mazal got on me. He's like, I love that project. You need to update it way more because I look forward to those posts. And I was like, got it. I can do that. Just for you, yeah, Justin. That and I guess you can also kind of see how the market goes and mm-hmm. and what's trending and what people like. And if it's not going so well, then maybe you can do something, you know, else that, I mean, because those are really kind of really funny projects. Yeah. Well, and it's funny to see which ones, like, people actually kind of pick up on and reblog. Like, people really like the one about the stage six clinger getting stuck in the chimney. Um, and... Oh, you you didn't send me that one though, did you? you I don't know, did I? I can't. I might I don't have. Think it, you did. It, it, Keep going. It's like in a triangle. Um. But yeah, it was. People really liked that one, but they also really liked the one I recently did about the the alien planet, um, which admittedly took me like three or four days to actually do because I had client work and I was just trying to fit it in little bits and pieces <laughs> at a time. Right. But, I think that's. That's what's amazing to me about your your stuff is that you are fitting these things in, but you're also getting work from some of these projects. And and if that's one thing that I learn at Creative South, or is that it's these side projects, and it's from last year and this year. Um, Derek Castle talked about this. You know, these side projects, these things that y'all are just doing, are and you're posting, you're sharing them. That's sometimes where you're getting. Your, your work from or clients are seeing that and they want more of that. Yeah, you don't, you'd actually be surprised how many clients reference this project. You know, yes. It's, it's kind of really funny, like how many, how many times, I actually get the, the 20 words you don't hear in the Midwest linked a lot. That's it, that's stage the clinger. Yeah. So this is one of the clickbaits. Um, Kim's asking um, if you can see, this is the chimney one. Um... And then, so she, how many of these do you think you've done, Shauna? Um, somewhere in the realm of like 15 to 20. I started it back just, in like October, I think. I'm just the, clicking through. Yeah, here's the alien yeah, planet one. There's the alien planet one. And the, the football one, the welcome to another edition of Bill Schwartzky's super fans one. Um, right. That was done for Danielle Evans and Joseph Alessio's uh, Super Bowl project. And that's another one where I was just like, well, this is a fun side project. Sure, I'll contribute. And I had an excuse to actually use SNL quotes and my favorite uh, football team. So, Right. It's I a great enjoy. It's a great one. So are yeah, you – are you, go ahead. Oh, I was just saying, I think Danielle wants to make it a wall, uh, an iPhone wallpaper eventually. So. Oh, that would be great. <laughs> yeah. So are you, and you're just taking anything that you really think is funny or that you click on, and then you're just taking the time. How much time does one of these take? It depends. The ones that are chalk-based actually take me quite a while. Um, I guess in the realm of, like, between five and ten hours. Wow. But the ink ones are really quick for me because I don't have to build it up. Whereas the chalk, the brushes I use, I've created, uh, I've created them in such a way that I do have to build up on them to make them very opaque. Right. But what about something like this one? Let me pull this one up. This was like the Creative South one. That took me 15 minutes. Wow. And you're using <laughs> your walk. Oh, you froze. Oh, no. Am I okay. back? Yeah, you're are you, back. Are you using your um, Wacom tablet, like the Cintiq, to get this? Yeah, I do all my work on the Cintiq. I've got it I've got it down here. Oh, yeah. So, that's where I work. There's Teddy. Oh. <laughs> um, let me see if I can position the camera a little lower. Cause it's, I feel awkward because I feel like I'm looking down here, but... I have to like look up here. It's weird. Um, so oh, hi, Dara wants to ask: um, Do you primarily do sketch your lettering all by hand, or do you? 
and then transfer the sketches to the computer and then refine. Can you talk a bit, a little bit about your process? Because I, so, I know sometimes you do that, but a lot of times you'll just start straight on the Cintiq. Yeah, like that Creative South one you just showed, like that was just done straight on the Cintiq. I was like, eh, I'm just going to do it. Um, but there's a lot of others that I will I will start in a sketchbook and I will do. I don't think, let me see if I've got any. Um, like, okay, oh, I found clickbait. Yay. So like, Yay. that clickbait, I don't think I sent this one to you, but it's on the website. But that one did start as a sketch. Um, and you can see like where the pink came in and so right like in some cases they do actually start as sketches like I'll I'll do a lot of them on my couch over there um, but many times it also you know a lot of times I just depending on what the project is if it's for myself I usually just jump right on the computer because it's just easier for me um, but a lot of times if it's for a client it has to be done sketched and sometimes I can fake it on the Cintiq and I'm just like this is your sketch deal with it um, but they're fine with it it's just like if it's something big I, I'll usually do it on the computer because then I can take things and I can move them around and, and size them and adjust them so that the hierarchy is there um, right. and in the in, in my notebook it's actually really hard for me to do that because I can't do multiple sizings easily but right. you know, so it, it it varies based on the client and the project. But a lot of times it will start in the sketchbook. Um, like Typefight did start briefly in a sketchbook, and then it immediately jumped into the computer. Like that one, I've got. I have it like way in the back here. Let me see. Yeah, like that was the sketch. Oh, nice. And then I. It's helpful that you have a Z in your name. You know what's funny? It's like, I don't ever really draw Zs, but I was I knew going in, I was like, I'm gonna use black letter and I'm gonna make this the darn black letter I've made. And based on last year, I had a feeling I'd either be getting the very beginning of the alphabet or the end of the alphabet. Because I didn't know if they'd start from the back and go forward. Mm -hmm. And Throughout the day, a few of my friends that did it were like, well, I had this letter, so they're going in the alphabet order. So eventually I was like, okay, I'm going to either have X, Y, or Z. So I prepared myself for those, and then they gave me <laughs> Z, and I was like, I prepared for X. Come on. <laughs> so, That's too funny. Well, um, so anybody who doesn't under know what type fight is, um, two guys, Drew Roper and Brian and I'm just splinking on his name. Somebody help me in the chat. I've interviewed them. Oh, anyway, they put together you and at Creative South, you go an hour and you have to produce a letter. They give you a letter. You don't know what letter you're getting. Um, Brian Butler, is that right? Butler? That sounds right. Anyway, it'll come to me after the show, I'm sure. But. They put you together, so Sean is competing against somebody else. Then you can heckle, right, a little bit? You can. Just a little bit about your... Yeah, I'm not very good at heckling. Um, I was up, actually, against another Orlando uh, hand lettering artist, uh, Kim Panella, and I was like, ah, I don't want to heckle. Like, I'm just not that kind of person. And I can never come up with one good enough. Like, Lenny and Mike have it down to an art. I am honestly jealous of their heckling skills, but at one point, um, yeah, at one point I I tried heckling, not her, just everyone in general, because they were all, right. you know, they're all like trying to heckle each other, and it was we still had 30 minutes left, and I go, I don't know about you guys, but I'm almost done with my letter, which was not far from the truth, because the last 30 minutes I was just like, oh, maybe I'll do this here. Yeah, yeah it was just like kind of filling the time, and so they, and they're like. How are you already done? I'm like, cause I'm the champ. So, because <laughs> right. I, I won Cause overall Sean, last year. Yeah, yeah. So last year you won overall, and um, and I I uh, believe did Scott Biersack win overall this year, right? He did. He got he got second last year, and this year he took the championship. So we flip flopped. Well, you can flip flop again, maybe. Yeah. You never I know. I any. I got an iPad yeah. mini. I'm happy. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I would have loved and to win 
I would have loved to win the championship again, but like I love my prize and I've been using it like crazy since Saturday, so I can't. That's complain. awesome. It's always good to share the share the love, share the wealth. I think so. That's awesome. Um, all right, so let normal week. You work a lot. I'm glad you take some time in the middle of the day to yeah. do something else so that you're not just sitting the whole time and getting stressed. Um, you want to give somebody a little bit of advice, somebody who's just starting out um, and they may maybe want to start on a certain type, of, maybe they want to do a certain type of illustration style. How? What do you think that is, is best for somebody who kind of has an idea of what kind of work they want to do? How much time do you think they should devote to learning, practicing, and sharing? Well, before I was doing this full time, I was actually, I'd come home and I'd practice like two to three hours every night. Um, but even if I didn't have time, I would at least put 15 minutes of practice in just because I was totally obsessed with lettering. Um, but like at one point, back when I lived in Jacksonville, I worked a full time job and then I'd go straight from the full time job to teach and I taught figure skating toddlers. Um, and then I'd go from there, and I would either end up working the public session or scorekeeping. And I wouldn't get home till like eleven midnight, somewhere in there. So there were there were some nights where it was actually like really hard for me to to get the practice in. So I would take like fifteen minutes and just sketch what I could, and then go to bed. Um, but there were some nights where I really didn't have anything going on, and I would just sit and sketch for as many hours as I could fit in. Um, I didn't. I, and I saw improvement over that time, but it wasn't until I was doing this 12 hours a day that I really saw improvement. Um, but if you want to at least just keep your skills up and kind of push your skills, like make sure you take, you know, 15 minutes a day at the very least um, to, to hone your skills. And you can do, I mean, you can sit and you can take, uh, like if you can, if you can fit three hours in, you're going to see a lot of improvement. But just like make up fake projects for yourself. You know, don't wait until the client work comes in. Like I sat and I made fake projects for years. I'd be like, I'm going to do a fake billboard for coffee. And I'd come up with something. You know, right. I, I at one point, I had nothing coming in. So I was like, I'm just going to make up a fake Starbucks cup design. And, and, then as, and as soon as I started like doing that and I just kind of kept myself really, really busy, I ended up um, getting, like, client work would come in because I was keeping myself busy and I wasn't focusing on, like, I don't have work, what's going on, so. Right, right. And, and you maybe weren't stressing out because you didn't have the work, so, but then you also, mm -hmm. you really um, utilize Skillshare, you also are listening to things, can you talk a little bit about that because I think that that's a, a interesting way while you're working, you're not necessarily watching the Skillshares, but you're listening, can you talk about yeah. that a little bit? Yeah, I, I'm i a big proponent of constantly learning. Um, it doesn't even matter what subject is it is. As long as you're constantly learning. Like, I love listening to podcasts. Um, if they if I listen to a podcast and it's like that tinny noise where it, it sounds like they're talking through a muffler, I can't right. listen to it. I'm I'm a little little picky on my podcasts, but like I love um, stuff you missed in history class. I am a huge history buff. I never retain any of it, but it's great background noise, and it, I feel like I'm at least learning something. Um, and I end up, like, I'll, I'll listen to different entrepreneurial podcasts. Um, Sean West's podcast is a good one. I actually listen to that a lot when I drive to my parents because it's the perfect length to get me from point A to point B. Right. Um but you've also listened to them multiple times. Like you'll repeat, yeah. um, which I think is really a neat way to kind of go because one thing I like about audio books is that I can take a note. Like with Audible, the app, I can take a note and I can, um, you know, Siri can sort of hear what I'm trying to say. But that's the one thing. It's like when you told me you just listened to them over and over, I'm like, oh, that's what I need to do. And that helped me so that it's not just this one time, I'm actually going to be taking it in more. So Yeah. And a lot of that is um, really just, a lot of it is too, I just like how it sounded. Like, 
I'll listen to Skillshare classes. Like I love I love Mary Kate's classes. I love Jessica Hish's classes. Um, Spencer Charles is one is really good as well. Yeah. And I'll just I probably played the one the most recent one by Mary Kate, the vintage one. I probably mm -hmm. played it like thirty or forty times just because I like listening to it and I start to retain it after a few times. Right. Um, but that's an, that's when I really enjoy and um there's, I mean, there's just a, there's a lot of them, but I do, and I, I actually have, I have all the Harry Potter books on audio tape, and I've listened to those like three or four times, because I love me oh, some that's Harry nice. Potter. Yeah. Amen. But, I'm with you on that. Yeah. So, I so can't go wrong for with Harry Potter. No, for sure. For somebody who's just starting out, and they want to increase their speed, what would be the thing that you would tell them the most? Definitely more than 15 minutes of practice a day, I would think. More than 15 minutes, but give yourself a timeline. Like, say, like you could do a mini type fight. Like, I give myself one hour to create this, to create a letter. And you have to stick to that. And if you don't finish in an hour, then you need to do it again and again. Yeah, I'd listen to Adventures in Design as well, Jason. Um, so, you know, it's like, uh, I lost my train of thought. Speed? Oh, um, yeah, but it, a lot of it is is just taking the time to practice. I, sorry, I'm still recovering from the practice. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, but yeah, it, like I, I'm a lot faster working now than I was, you know, a year ago, and it's just constant practice. Um, bye, Ted. And, you know, it's just. Do you think technically? Ahead. Technically, faster or conceptually? Do you think you've increased speed on both um, forefront? Um, I think on the technical side, yes. Um, mostly because I found kind of found my style niche, so I know where I have things I can gravitate to. If I go and I start trying a new style, like if I try the black letter, it takes me longer because it's not comfortable yet. Right. But things that I'm comfortable with, I actually can just jump in and go. But with the conceptual stuff, I'd actually always struggled with conceptualizing so that takes me a little longer because I'm still working on that but I'm hoping one day it, it clicks and things just keep going and I'm just like cool this works let's go well I think you doing all these exercises in the morning with these side projects helps you I think that helps you to get faster because you're pushing yourself you're li giving yourself a time limit so then um, you're gonna go you're gonna conceptually attack it faster than you would have attacked it the time before. Talk a little bit about your uh, Christmas patterns and why you started that, because that was really kind of a different. It wasn't lettering. You really wanted to do more illustration. Can you talk a little bit about that one? Yeah, um, I noticed with like lettering, everything's been getting so saturated lately. Like there's just so many people wanting to try it because it's very trendy, and right. Um, it makes me really happy that people do want to try it. Um, but it also makes it very hard because I'm realizing, like, with the with the saturation, like, there's a chance it's going to go out of style soon. I don't know how soon, how soon soon is. It could be six months. It could be five years. Right. I'd like to think that I'm my work is strong enough that I'll still be able, I'll still be doing lettering once the trend is worn out. But I'm... I wanted to make sure that I still am good at illustration in the back, you know, just to be, just in case it gets to that point where client comes to me and like, well, we don't want lettering, but we want you to draw this. I want to be able to say like, okay, right. yes, I can draw this. Or like right now I'm working on finding this like nice, um, this nice marriage of lettering and illustration. And so over, over Christmas time, I was like, I just kind of want to do something that's that's different, you know, just something quick. Doesn't need to go past the holidays, and it's easy. Right. And I started. I decided. I was like, well, patterns would be fun. That would be that would be fun to try. And I was like, well, I could do I could do a you know twelve days of Christmas theme pattern. And so back in November, I got my Cintiq companion. I love that thing, and it actually makes it a lot easier for me when I travel home to my parents when I go travel because. Especially my parents, I don't take over the whole kitchen, kitchen table anymore, and that's a bonus. Uh, <laughs> so tell them what the Cintiq Companion is, just in case they don't know. Okay, it's it's a it's basically the the Wacom Cintiq tablet, but it's a standalone computer. 
They've updated them late recently so that the standalone computer option, you can plug into your computer and it works like what I've got on my desk. So it's like a two-in-one deal now. So I was just, it was a good way too for me to like start practicing with that tablet and get used to it. And so like on, it was like Thanksgiving, we were watching Planes, Trains, and Automobiles and I'm sitting there and I'm drawing my first pattern of Christmas and um, my parents were like, what are you up to? I was like, doodling, doing my, doing this new project I decided to do, and they're like, oh, okay, cool, and I, I did one every night that I was home, and on, like, night three, I was doing the three French hens, and my dad loves when things get really punny, and it was every now and then I feel really clever, and this one made me feel really clever, so I did the, I did my little French hens, and they were dressed like little French maids, and one had, like, the mustache, and, but I'd only done two or three so far, I was like, hey, dad, look, what do you think? And he goes, goes, ha, I like those. Those are cute. He goes, why isn't one wearing a French maid outfit? I'm like, three French hens. There's only two. I got to draw one more. I said, the French maid outfit's coming. <laughs> but he got, a, he got a kick out of it. He was like offering his own. He's like, well, what if you did this? And what if you did this? And what if you did this? And I'm like, I got it. I love you, but I got it. I can do this. <laughs> and, um, well, and he really wanted to be a designer, I think, right? And he's a dentist, and he always pushed you to doing this. Yeah, he he was he's a dentist now, but he did like he did design and stuff in in I think high school and a little college. Um, if I remember right, he he used to lay out the magazine for the local 99s chapter. And if you don't know what the 99s is, it's a, a women's flight uh, club essentially. They all. They're all over the U.S., and there was a chapter in, in Glenview, Illinois, my grandma was a part of for many, many, many years. I think I think technically she's still a part of it, but she doesn't fly anymore because she's in a nursing home. Um, but she, flying was also very big in their lives growing up. Like my dad has a pilot's license. My uncle has a pilot's license. My grandma was a pilot. My grandpa was a pilot. Like Something that didn't translate down to my generation, but whatever. <laughs> right. Well... Um, can we talk about your style a little bit? Like, yeah, especially with the the Christmas stuff, but it really saturates throughout. Like, you have a really fun, light style. So some people like me who are really tight, and um, to me, Danielle's class was hard because I couldn't play. And so Shauna and I are sitting uh, across from each other. Of course, this is not good for me, but... Um, but Shauna's like, oh, you should try, you know, try this. And I'm, thank goodness, somebody, because I was just like, I was like a robot girl, couldn't um, really stretch. And so I don't know if it's just because I've been, you know, it's like that voice. It's like it's got to be perfect. So how do you deal with that kind of like perfectionist mentality or like killing that, like, and just let it be fun because they're almost, I've never really seen you do anything that didn't feel fun. But they definitely have different voices, you know? Yeah. What it is, because I'm a big perfectionist. Um, my mom can attest to that. My dad can attest to that. My sister is actually worse than I am. And so for me, a lot of what helped was when I was in, in college and I was taking illustration, our teacher used to give us different exercises to try that we'd do for the first hour of class. And it was really fun, this one that, I ended up really loving called Stream of Consciousness Drawing. Mm -hmm. You don't think about what you're going to draw. You don't think about the style you're going to draw it in. You just draw. And what it was is we were we would we all had to bring in a big pad of paper, and everyone would draw, and then you'd pass it, and then you'd draw, and you'd add on to what they were doing, but you didn't think about it. You didn't try to make it a composition. You just drew and you passed it on. And so a lot of my work actually eventually evolved into a lot of Stream of Consciousness Drawing, and it's hard to tell because I, I mean I still am very much perfectionist um, but a lot of what helps is the tools I use on, on Photoshop and stuff because it has that rough edge if I use something with a smooth edge I'd be sitting there and I'm, I'd be like okay this has got to be perfect I gotta mm -hmm. smooth this out right here but I use something that's rougher so that there is no perfection um, and it, it forces me to kind of just let go and just make the work and a lot of it is also like I don't realize kind of how far my work goes. I'm in my own little bubble in here. So I end up like, I'm like, well, no one's going to see this. I just make it for fun and I put it out there. Right. You know, and then ultimately like Tumblr picks it up and 10,000 people are following and I'm like, dang it. 
<laughs> Dang it. Um, you know, or like the case of Creative South where people knew my work, they didn't know my face, and then when they put two and two together, all of a sudden I was like, okay, I'm in the spotlight now. What do I do? <laughs> so a lot of it is just me kind of not thinking about who's going to see my work. It's just doing it to please my inner five-year-old and mm -hmm. doing it just to make the work. Just do it to do it. And I'll, and also what helped, too, is you know the reason I use the pink pencil when I do sketches is because I can be loose. I don't have to be perfect yet. I can just sit there and I can just sketch and sketch and sketch until I'm happy because the darker pencil is what defines it. Right. So it just kind of it it allows me to be a little looser. But a lot of it is just I just said you know what, I have to screw them. I have to screw the perfectionism thing. Like it can come into play when I'm checking over the work to send to clients. But I need to, in order to retain my style and just to really be able to have fun with it, I need to stay loose. Um, yeah, I think you're you're great at that, and I don't know if you're just great at killing that inner critic of like letting it go. But, <laughs> so <laughs> you're 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 you work alone with Teddy, and then you have um, what I thought was really cool. Uh, you do you have an agent who um, I think somebody asked earlier. I can't remember who it was, but asked how you, how that kind of um, by choosing to go through an agent, your life is better. <laughs> Yeah, it's, I mean, it's not for everyone, but it definitely made a positive impact on my life because I, I'm better at promoting myself now, but back when I started, I sucked at promoting, I sucked at pricing. Like, my mom and I both got copies of the, the um, Graphic Designers Guild, whatever, guide to pricing and other right. guidelines. Like, she and I, I'd be like, Mom, I don't know how to price this. And she'd look through, she's like, well, the book says you should do it like this, and... So she and I were both like kind of very lost then. And as soon as I got the agent, she's like, all right, you don't need me anymore. I'm <laughs> done. And, but I, I also got very lucky because they, they took a chance on me. You know, I didn't have much work and they're like, they, the, the event, you know, the agreement was make eight to ten more pieces in ch the chalk style and then we'll put you live and then you have six months um, you have a six month trial period and then we'll go from there and like the next thing I knew six months was over I'd done a ton of work for all these different clients and then I was like wait a minute it's been like eight months they're like yep yeah, we're fine keep going and so, so I'll be the, you go ahead I was there. I've been with them for two years in, in June this year so it's, oh, yeah. it's fun so your book which I happen to have right here um, um, and I went ahead and uh, so this is all about chalk lettering. Yeah. And agent is it? And it's a agency, right? But you have one girl who you work with, right? Well, it's it's an yeah, it's an artist rep, and I actually have several agents. It just depends on the region that the project's taking place in. So in the U.S., I have two ladies that I'm in contact with, and in the U.K., there's three people and in France there's I think two people and then in Germany there's one person and so and I'm <laughs> just reading Lenny, Lenny. <laughs> Lenny. Yeah. so if you're just watching us on YouTube and you can't see the chat um, Lenny uh, Jason uh, F says I wish there was just an agent for straight graphic designers and then Lenny comes back and says, Jason, what does sexual orientation have to do with it? And then he winks, you know? And then we, me and both Shauna just go off and we're just re reading this. So anyway, this is why I like Design Recharge because you can... Um, Creative Lettering and Beyond is the title of the book, uh, Kim, just so you know. But all right, so back to Shauna. Yeah. Anyways, <laughs> oh no, you froze a little. There, oh, I'm back. back. I'm okay. You're back. But so you talk in in your section. You got this from your agent, right? The the work. Yeah, the job went. They, well, it actually, I think it initially approached me, and then I forwarded them off to my agent. And I I said, this sounds awesome. Can we do this? They're like, uh, yes, we will. Let's figure out what their pricing is and what their budget is, and it just, 
it turned into the, it was about a three or four month long project and it was just really cool but it was even more fun when it came out in person um, because I got actually my mom's copy came before my copy she was like taking pictures she's like look what came look what I got and then like I met up with her at Barnes and Noble um, with her and my aunt they happened to be like down the road from me so I had walked into Barnes and Noble and they were standing there and immediately my aunt goes where's the book and like I had to take her back and the second she had it in her hand she turned around and she walked straight to the cash register she's like I'm buying this oh so, that's so nice. But it's a great, yeah. I mean, like, you have a huge section, and you really go through chalk lettering. So um, if you, I think that the pricing that ethical guideline books is great, but I'm I'm just not that smart, I think. So I use an app just for anybody else who wants to know. I use an app called My Price, right there, if you can see it. It's like, I don't know, 5 or $7, but it's awesome. You put in your information, check it out, and... It's a good way to price it on your yourself. Okay, so Eric wants to know, um, he's curious about how pricing works when you have an agent. Can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah, um, it's been, like, basically my agents get a cut of whatever I make on every project because that and that's what covers their fees. Um, but very often they actually try to, to shoot a little bit higher um, at first to see if the client goes for it. And if they do, fantastic. Um, because then I get a bigger cut and they get a little bit of a bigger cut. Um, but they always try to make it so that I get the most um, the most uh, income from each project that I absolutely can. Um, but they take care of, I mean, they take care of the contracts. They take care of contacting the client off the bat. Um, negotiating the prices, like they they'll ask that they'll find find out what the client's budget is, what they're asking for. Like they, because a lot of times the client's like, "Hey, I have a project. Are you free?" And it's like, "Well, I mean, I am, but what's the project?" Yeah. So the client or it's my agent will go and they'll be like, "Okay, can you tell us like what the project is, what the details are, what the usage is, um, how long, you know, how long, what territory, worldwide, nationwide, you know, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, you know, print web, yada yada," and Sometimes, you know, sometimes they'll ask for a full buyout, so we give them, like, this is the price for two years, this is the price for five years, this is the full buyout price. Um, and it just ended up working out really, it's worked out really well for me because I, I just would not have known half that, you know. And and all the stuff they help you with with contracts and then getting the right getting your images they're handling all that stuff so that you can just focus on doing your work and you don't have to focus on making sure that the line 16 says the exact same yeah. exact thing yeah you know, it, so, it saves me a lot of a lot of headache especially when it comes to the contracts cuz they they all if they don't understand something they have someone else they can ask and they'll clear it up and you know, so it really helps to have like someone backing me, right? And then, and then it doesn't seem like you're just pulling that price out of your butt. You know, like, oh, well, right. somebody else thinks you should charge for this. So, so a couple other, um, a couple other people who are commenting really about the agent stuff. So, Brittany wants to know if you found it frustrating having a middleman, and then, um, you know, Dan wants to know if there's any downfalls with using an agent. And then I swear we'll get to. Um, Kim, Kim's question. I'll make sure I remember. But I saw what hers was. I approached them. Um, they, I had approached them like way back when, um, before I moved to Orlando, and they put my work in front of the group, and I, and I said, they said, um, you know, we, we like your work. It's not ready quite yet, but please keep sending us stuff. And if an agent tells you to continue sending stuff, they do see potential. Um, and then I moved, got busy, and then the week I, when I got fired, like the final, the following week, I emailed them and I said, "Is it okay if I still send you um, work? I'm now full time." And they're like, "Of course, by all means, please do send us things as you finish them." And it was as soon as I did the Jacksonville magazine. I'd sent several other things, and then it was, but it was the Jacksonville magazine where they're like, "That's it. That's what we want. That's the style we're looking for. Your contract's coming next week." Um, but I'd been. I, I had been applying to different agencies as well. Um, I know friends. I have friends that have been. They've been approached by agents, which I think is fantastic. Um, but in my case, I actually had to reach out to somebody. And then, um, any downfalls? Then, 
or do you find it frustrating I have the middleman? No, honestly, the middleman actually helps a lot. Once the project is is solidified, I'm talking directly with the client. Once they have the job order in place, once they have the budget agreed on, I get in contact with the client. But, but a lot of it is just it keeps it actually very professional to begin with, and then I and then I can go and um and interact with the client because a lot of times you know if a project doesn't go through like then I don't want to already be invested with the client um, but right. I do keep my agent updated so like I'll go back and forth with the client and then when I send a milestone because they my client or my agent will do they do milestone payments um, I copy them so that they know I sent it you know so when I send the comps they're copied so they know that the comp was sent when the final sent they're copied and then they always look at it and they're like, great job, it looks fantastic, we love it. Um, I do know Mike Barnhart. So, He's awesome. So, Sorry. What, no, no, that's good. So sometimes with um, agents, they'll like promote your own, your stuff. They'll like put together a package. So you just mm -hmm. did this uh, incredible um, little tarot cards kind of thing and they're in their envelope and they totally stood out at Creative South. Is that something they pay for? Is that something you pay for? What? How does that kind of work? That's something I did. Um, there's a promo I sent out last year, and because they let me use their their contact list, mm -hmm. um, I had to put I had to put their their contact information on it because if they got any pingbacks from it, they it needed to go to their email. Um, with this one, it's just like this was just something silly that it really wasn't to garner any work. It was just to make connections, and I didn't want them all emailing my agent and being like, "Hey, Shauna, how are you?" And then them forwarding to be like. Um, but a lot of times, like, they do their own stuff on, they do their own promotions. They actually emailed me right before Creative South. They said next week, so this week, um, is your promotion week. So we'll be putting an email out with your stuff. They actually put the tarot cards in there. Um, we'll be promoting you on social media. Um, we'll be, you know, doing all the stuff. They, they're putting me in the directory of illustration this year, so I'm really excited about that because that's going to be, hopefully that's going to bring in a lot. Um, but uh, yeah, like I, they do their own promotions. They put out this thing called Scrapbook every year. I was in last year's Scrapbook, um, and they do. Anytime you have a project that goes live, they'll post about it, which is cool. So you so just have to let them know. How much are you doing social media wise? Promote your work, and what would you tell somebody that if they want to do work, any kind of work, how often should they be? posting and promoting and not like hey look what I did but or a process works anything I mean I think it's very important to be active on social media I like to come across as as a human you know I don't like to people looking at me like this robot that just turns out work right um, so I'm very I'm very open on so, on social media especially Twitter um, we actually had this I had this conversation with um, my friend Megan Ryan uh, Eliza Cerderos and Molly Jakes this weekend we all were sitting down talking to Molly. He was like, I need to get on Twitter more. She goes, I just don't post all that often. And we're like, uh, yeah, we're all on it. We talk all day. And whereas I'm like one of those where I'm just like such an oversharer sometimes that I have to pull back. And it's kind of funny. Like you said, I've noticed Molly's on, on social media a lot more as of this week. So I'm really excited about that because she's got so much she can contribute to that. And I just feel like being active on social media gives you it gives you a human presence but I have to be very careful because it does actually make people feel like they're very very familiar with you and while I love having lots of friends it's it's kind of it actually kind of scares me sometimes with how like if I've never met someone completely in person and we haven't had conversations if they just start talking to me like they know me they've known me for years it kind of freaks me out um, right but you know but I'm always you know I'm always open to you know talking on social media and answering questions you know I'm I am like I said I'm very open about that stuff um, but I also really like Instagram and I, I have to kind of pull back I actually post way more on Instagram than I probably should but I did like pull back on like what? what is that like how many is that like eight times a day is that like two times a day like what's too much um, I think more than like three times a day you know, I, I've had days where it's just been like a, 
a boom, a boom, a boom, a boom, a boom, a boom, and I'm like, oh, I've posted like 10 times today. What is wrong with me? And a lot of that is just like I'm not getting work done. If I'm sitting and posting, work isn't getting done. Um, right. But I also had a thing where I kept like I was posting lots of pictures of Mr. Teddy, and I had to make a separate Instagram for him to get so that if I had that urge to post things, I could just put it on his account. So if you want to follow him, he's he's I'm putting it in the chat. Okay. And do you know of any agencies that are are or um, places that would just focus on just graphic designers? Because I know you're a letter and an illustrator. Yeah. Do you know of any that are just purely graphic design? I don't. Um, at that point, I think that's just hiring a project manager. Yeah. Um, I, I only know of like illustration and art reps versus design. Like, in, and granted, I still get logo work. You know, I still get design work, but it's sure. more on the branding and logo and like, like stuff like this. Like, I've been my Namaste cup. Right. So. So I know. I know that. The creative group, if you're interested, I usually interview them a few times a year. The cre the creative group dot com, they do they're kind of like an agent for designers. So they do web design, they do print design. So if you guys you but they work like an agent as well, so they handle the stuff if you're if somebody wants to look at through them. I think they're great. <laughs> So Jason says he's going to have to, uh, if he follows Teddy, he's going to have to kidnap a dog. So <laughs> You're not the first. Danielle's actually threatened to steal him, too. And my parents. <laughs> Pretty much anyone that meets Teddy threatens to steal him. <laughs> so for you being so, and I, this will have to be our last question, Shauna. I know it's, the, it's we're over our time, but for you being... Because you're you don't seem introverted, but you you seem like you can totally be fine working alone for days. So how is it getting up there on stage? I mean, you've done workshops, which and you've done um, you know other talks, but maybe wasn't quite as big as Creative South. So how how was that experience? It honestly, it wasn't all that terrifying. Um, I joke that I'm. In yeah, like I'm, I joke that I'm an introverted extrovert or an extroverted introvert, and because I can sit at home for three days straight and be just fine. Right. Um, I actually prefer like being very quiet. And like there was one point over the weekend at Creative South that we were just we were all very overwhelmed, and so Molly, Eliza, Megan, and I went back to the hotel and we just ate lunch at the hotel where it was quiet and. We just got away from like the crowd and stuff because it, it does very much overwhelm me. I just hide it very well. Um, but I think a lot of I think a lot of what has helped was that I do have the training in singing. Um, I had to go on stage. I had to look comfortable doing it. You know, you couldn't show the audience that you were terrified. And I, um, I you know, I did the biggest taboo on walking on stage. I said, guys, I'm nervous and I'm scared. And I just went on, you know, but I getting on stage for me is, is a lot more comfortable than singing in front of people. I sang at my, my friend's wedding and I I came off I, I had to sit down afterwards and just collect myself because I was terrified. Um, but then like a week later I was talking at Design Madison and I was fine. So right. but I, I am one of those though where I really can just I could sit at home for days, and that's the benefit of having Teddy. Is he actually forces me to get out of the apartment, um, and I'll, I I go and I meet up with my my neighbor and her dog Chloe, and the dogs play, and she and I catch up on life. So, it uh, you know, it's it works, and I found a good balance with it. You know, I have to thank all you know sorority life forced me to have to be a bit more extroverted, especially during rush week, because you have to get these girls wanting to join the sorority, and you can't be this, like, wallflower in a corner, because, you know, right. you won't get girls. You know, you won't get them involved in the sorority. You won't get them excited about the sorority, and you have to learn about them, so you have to be, like, willing to talk. If you get two introverted people together, they just sit there, and they're like, mm-hmm. <laughs> yep. Right, right. So. Well, Shauna... You're always inspiring. You have a lot of great knowledge, and you can give us some good business skills as well. I think being active on social media, promoting your work, but not too much. So maybe three times a day 
is is Max that maybe um, maybe that's a good fit. And one last question on that: Do you post on the weekends, so or do you just do Monday through Friday? Oh, I post all the time. Like honestly, <laughs> I'm really active on Twitter, um, Instagram. Like there's some there's sometimes I'll go some a few days without posting. Um, I've been more active the last couple days because of Creative South and stuff, but I did not take as many photos there as I expected I would. So it kind of depends, but I do spend my weekends um, drawing, so I do post on the weekends. Um, you know, and, and if you guys find me on Twitter, like I'm always I'm always game for talking. You know, just hit me up. Awesome. Um, well, Shauna, I have your um, Twitter and I think your Instagram is the same. Um, yeah, and they Instagram and Dribble. Yeah, um, and I know how to say it, Shauna Pancheson. I can say it over and over now because um, I practiced after that first time. But um, and I've changed sites just so you guys know. It's now at rechargingyou.com. Um, there's a, a tab up at the top for Design Recharge, so you can click and you can watch all the old shows. It's much easier to um, search for a show. You can search for a person. You can search for a topic. Um, so, And it's still, we're working things out. It doesn't really work as well on mobile, but Rob and I are going to get it together. So, um, again, I do this every week. Next week, I have um, an amazing animator, uh, Brandon Olenberg. And he is in. Um, he has gotten an Academy Award. Super easy to talk to guy. Um, he did the Chipotle Scarecrow commercials. Um, oh, if you've that seen, guy. Yeah, that guy. I mean, he's. I mean, his. It's Moonbot Studios, so he's not alone. But there's like, they really love the story. So if you are into storytelling, or you want to learn more about how to make your animations. Or your stories really come to life, whether it's an illustration, because they really love the you know, printed book. So I definitely would love to uh, see you guys back here uh, next week, April 22nd at uh, 1.30 Central, 2.30 Eastern, 11.30 Pacific. And you can do the math for Mountain Time. If not, we can talk later. Just email me at diane at designrecharge.org um, or diane at rechargingyou.com. Uh, I'm going to get all confused. But here's some ways to follow me, um, Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter, and then come back. And we will have, if you're not on the list, there's going to be a page later today, and I'll share it on um, Twitter. So, Shauna, thank you. I can't wait to have you back. I can't wait to see what is next for you. You have amazing work. I was super excited that we we're doing your book for our book club for AIGA. And I hope you guys get this because it's awesome. And the you're you're just really driven, very inspiring. And I'm really thankful that you were able to do the interview so quick after Creative Talk. Thank you for having me. I've been looking forward to this. So, and I'm glad I got to see you at Creative South and so many people that are in the chat. I know, and we got to hug next. Um, there is a redirect, Jason, just so you know. Um, it, if you go to Design Recharge, it'll just take you to the new site, and you'll be able to see everything there. And it's much easier. The archive is up, but it's not doesn't look as pretty as it will. It'll be like blocks, and you'll be able to see the images and go through. So we're still working. It's a soft launch. but So if you see something you think's not working, please email me. But, Shauna, thank you again so much, and I'll see you all next week with uh, 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 Brandon Olenberg with Moonbot Studios. So thank you guys, and have a great day. And, Shauna, you are awesome.